Thanks for staying with us. Uh, remember that yesterday we talked about uh, female genital mutilation. Yesterday was actually the day, uh, 6th of February, uh, set aside by the United Nations um, for, as the International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation. And I have uh, joining me right now to discuss this, Victoria Augustine. She is an advocacy officer and is also a chapter leader, or change leader rather, with Nguvu Collective. Good morning and welcome to the program, Victoria. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, um, let's start with the definition of uh, uh, female genital mutilation. Let's, let's start with a description of what it is. Okay. So, yes, about female genital mutilation. Female genital mutilation is a procedure or procedures, right, that involve injury or like altering the female genitalia. And this procedure is actually for non medical reasons. And internationally and nationally, it is recognized as a violation of the human rights and the integrity of women and girls. 200 girls, more than 200 girls and women have undergone female genital mutilation. And in 2022, um, UNICEF recorded Nigeria as the um, world's highest number of women, with the um, largest, third world largest amount of women who have undergone FGM globally, with 19.9 million survivors. Mm. Do you think that figure is uh, accurate? Because if you think about uh, what Nigeria and Nigerians believe, the belief system here uh, puts female genital mutilation as a, a necessity, something that has to be done and all mm -hmm. that, at least uh, in the days before now. Uh, do you think 19 point something million justifies what is, not justifies, is a good figure? Okay. I, I would say for statistics and um, looking at the survey they did, I would say at the time when it was done, it is actually, yes, might be accurate okay. or close to that or just within the margin, yes. Okay. So why, why do you think that this is really uh, important now to commemorate a day like this? Uh, yesterday was uh, 6th of February and it's set aside for um, marking that, that it should be zero tolerance to female um, genital mutilation. Why do you think it's very important? Okay. So like I explained earlier, female genital mutilation, it is actually deep rooted in cultural practices. Right, and it has harmful effects on women, it has harmful effect on our sexual reproductive health, and it infringes on our rights as women, as humans, right, and our general um, well being. So, commemorating a day like yesterday, being the uh, 6th of February, is really important to us as. It's a day that I set aside to reflect on on the journey towards, er towards the er eradication of female genital mutilation in Nigeria and around the globe. And it also is important because it helps us to know our milestones, what we've achieved, and reaffirm our commitment to combating FGM. Okay, so far, since uh, this thing was instituted, do you think it has had any impact on especially a society that, uh, like Nigeria? Do you think the female mut um, genital mutilation has gone down or it's still there? Okay, so according to um, um, studies, according to um, a news headline yesterday, I think from Punch News, I, I went to it and they said um, there is actually a decline as it was 20 to 30 years back, but it is still prevalent because people like they still practice it, right? Female genital mutilation is still widely practiced. So although 20, 30 years back, it's like the change is there, but we have not gotten it. So I wouldn't say there's actually a 
there's really there's a really there's as a really decline in uh, female genital mutilation. Okay, but especially I, in Nigeria. Oh, I know that um, your organization that you work with, Nguvu Collective, you you've been having some collaborations and all that. And how far have you gone, especially in interacting with? Uh, uh, Things like or bodies like uh, Ministry of Human uh, Women Affairs is that what they call it? Ministry yeah. of Women Affairs, yes, Ministry of Women Affairs and other relevant ministries to make sure that this thing is uh, uh, is 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 given the voice that it, it requires. Okay, yes. Yeah, so um, that is actually the reason I started this campaign. So it will get to the Ministry of Women Affairs the National Human Rights Commission, and um, other relevant bodies, including the um, Nigeria Police Force, right? So, as a group collective, we are doing our best to make sure that we carry this message. And the uh, uh, Ministry of Women Affairs, they are also deeply rooted. But the thing is, there is actually no recorded case of a perpetrator of female gender mutilation that has been brought to you. So, but we are working towards that. So, you're working towards making sure that any parent that does this is jailed for mutilating yes. their daughter or for. Yes. Wow. Yes. How come nobody is talking about the men? Men go through um, mutilation, as it were, as well. So, wh why is it all right for the men mm -hmm. and not for the women? Okay. So, for the women, for the women, you circumcision. That is why it is called female genital mutilation, right? For the men, medically, it it is proven that circumcision has no medical effect on the men. It actually aids helps them like to against prostate cancer at a, at an older age and some other health conditions. Right, but for the women, there is no medical backing for female genital mutilation, and it is it can actually not be compared to what is being done to the men because there are actually different categories of this female genital mutilation. Mm. But yes. some some of these traditional people give their reasons as you know it helps against promiscuity. It helps uh, so many reasons that they give they give for doing this kind of things. Are you debunking all of these ones that uh, it is not true? Yes, I mean you cannot say uh, you mutilated a child to cut down on from uh, being promiscuous. It doesn't, like, there is no medical backing. And so far, there has been no even physical um, um, backing to that, that after mutilating a, a female, a female uh, genitalia, it stops the female, the, the female or the girl child from being promiscuous. Those are just, those are fallacies, those are myths and misconceptions that we are actually trying and working towards to demystify, to debunk those um, myths. May I, may I be a little bit personal right now? Uh, did you suffer mm -hmm. uh, the uh, genital mutilation or did you, do you know someone who did? Uh, personally, I, have not, I did not explicitly suffer from the genital mutilation. But I know someone, I've met, I've met a couple of persons who underwent female genital mutilation and I have experienced it during my service year and it was what she, it was what made, motivated me to start this um, campaign in Google Collective because I witnessed a child being mutilated. Oh. Okay, but you, that means you know, you know people who were not uh, mutilated and those who were mutilated. Did, have you seen any change or any difference, rather, in their behaviors, especially their sexual behaviors, uh, that will give credence to what the people who do this believe? 
Yeah, that's, um, I actually talked earlier on um, the um, um, types of um, female genital mutilation, right? And so persons who, in their sexual behavior, there might be differences depending on the kind of mutilation that was carried out on them. Mm. Okay. Let's go back to what your, your campaign is all about. Your campaign uh, with this Nguvu Collective uh, is you're calling on the Ministry of Women Affairs, uh, the police force as well, and other relevant authorities to implement the section of the VAPP Act. Uh, so let us know what this VAPP Act is, or VAP Act, I, I don't know how you call it, but let's know what the provisions are that you want implemented. Okay. So the VAP Act, it's called the VAP Act. It's um, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. And it was enacted in 2015 um, by the National Assembly. And it was passed to become a law by President Udo Ebele Jonathan, the president at the time in Nigeria. So the goal of that act is to eliminate violence in public, private life prohibit all forms of violence against persons and provide maximum protection and effective remedies for victims and also punish offenders, right? So that VAP Act was actually enacted as a result of many um, gender-based violence and human rights abuses that was happening in Nigeria. So including rape, uh, spousal maiming, forceful ejection, isolation and all of those things. So that was why. And the section of the FAP Act that talks about female genital mutilation, although it did not explicitly provide a clear definition of FGM, right? But section six of the VAP Act talked about prohibited uh, uh, FGM. It also it criminalized, not it criminalized the act of engaging in female genital mutilation and not just we don't have just the VAP Act. We have the Child Rights Act of 2003 and we have also the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria, Federal Republic of Nigeria. And we all as we all know in Nigeria the um, the constitution is the supreme law of the land. And all these laws put together speak against any form of inhuman such uh, torture degrading treatment or punishment, right? So, the thing is, um, I, I basically talk, I'm talking about the VAP Act, I'm calling on the um, National Human Rights Commission, Ministry of Women Affairs, and also the police force. So far, like I said earlier, there has been no arrests of any perpetrator. It doesn't mean that we, um, people are not committing the crime of female genital mutilation. It is happening. It is happening, right? But most times, when some persons that I have spoken to, they, will, they, they tell you that when they go to these authorities to report this crime of female genital mutilation, they get stories like, it's, it is a cultural uh, matter, it is a family matter, you're not supposed to interfere and all of those things. So my, my campaign is to call on these relevant bodies to make sure that perpetrators are being are brought to Well, that, that will be a very difficult thing, I know, because... Um, the person who undergoes this, undergoes it when she is still very young. Maybe she mm -hmm. grows up to 20 years before she knows that it was, uh, it was her right that was taken away when she was just below one year old and all that. And uh, it, reporting, uh, my father did this or my mother did this 20 years ago might be a difficult thing. So we should be looking at how to get these evangelism as it is to the grassroots how do you intend mm -hmm. to do that how can it get to the to the local level so that the people get to know because if if these things will change it has to be at that local level at the mm -hmm. village level yes. not in towns so how do you intend mm -hmm. to take this message down there okay so um, we cannot um, downplay the role of con um, constant education right like community engagement and education. 
we have to educate these people in rural areas especially about the dangers of female genital mutilation and that is something we are looking at at Mbubu Collective to disseminate this this um, message in their local languages because most of these people do not even understand our English language do not understand English language so we are looking to disseminate this um, information to their local languages bring it down to their level consistently educating them not just stopping you need not like educating and leaving them and all of that constant education continuous education is something that would work for the rural communities also training of healthcare providers in these rural communities because the first time ever i was a teenager growing up i experienced um female genital i experienced a genitalia being mutilated was um, a pharmacist right and the child was an, um, an intersex child and the child was being mutilated. I think one of the genitalia was being taken off. I was just a teenager growing up. So if we can, if we can do um, the, that, also why I was calling on the Ministry of Women Affairs trainings for healthcare personnel in these rural areas on the dangers and the complications involved in female genital mutilation and also a reporting channel. Oh, okay. So, um, yes. yeah, we have like one minute to go, so just very fast. What can the people just do to help? Because Ministry of Women Affairs is Ministry of Women Affairs, but the mm -hmm. people are on ground. What can people, especially the ones watching now, how can we contribute to making sure that that message is uh, uh, gone to the grassroots as we want it? Okay, so how people can actually help is by, I have a petition up on change.org on ending female genital mutilation so they can support by signing the petition and donating if they can so that it can get to a broader audience and to the space to the target um stakeholders that okay. we are targeting for my i'm targeting for my campaign and also support they can also support by reporting perpetrators of female genital mutilation to relevant authorities and i believe that with collective efforts we will actually meet our goal of achieving um, gender equality and elimination of female genital mutilation by 2020. All right. Thank you very much. I mm -hmm. hope we, it doesn't get to a point where we'll have to arrest a whole village because <laughs> they all <laughs> are guilty. Thank you, Victoria, for coming on the show Thank and uh, enlightening us on all these issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. All right. We've been talking to Victoria Augustine, a change leader with Nguvu Collective. We'll take a short break now and return with our second hot topic. Stay with us.